Fear of God and listen to the Holy Gospel. A reading from the Gospel according to our teacher, St. John. The evangelist may his blessing. From the Psalms of our teacher David, the prophet, may his blessings be with us. Amen. Many, O oh Lord, my God, are your wonderful works which you have done. And your thoughts toward us cannot be recounted to you in order. Let such as love your salvation say continually, the Lord be magnified. Blessed is he who comes in the name. Saviour and King of us all, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, to whom is glory. A certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who had anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, The sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he had heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then after this he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you, and you are going there again. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. These things he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he was speaking about taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Then Thomas, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away, and many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary 
to comfort them concerning their brother. Now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. And when she had said these things, she went her way and secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, The teacher has come and is calling for you. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the town, but was in a place where Martha met him. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and comforting her, when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out, followed her, saying, She's going to the tomb to weep there. Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again groaning in himself came to the tomb, and it was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me, and I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews who had come to Mary and had seen these things, Jesus did believe in him. Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, amen. 
and the miracle of our Lord Jesus Christ and to raise Lazarus from the dead was so important in the life of the church and also it is part of his mission um, of salvation to all of us. And as you are aware that um, um, Lazarus' family is a small family, apparently was not known to many and living in a small town or a small village beside Jerusalem. But even though they were not known by the people living there, but they were known to Christ. So when Christ knows, he knows every one of us because he is all-knowing. But his knowledge of them was on a personal level. And that's why after that, they were known by him to everyone. Even the small town, and they call it there now El Azrawiya, coming from Lazarus. And also the whole family were known by him to everyone. So sometimes we come to the church and we say, no one knows us. But actually Christ knows you personally. He knows everything about you. And you'll be, when you have a relationship between you and him, you are known by him to everyone. And when I say everyone, not only those people like they are living on earth, but you will be known by everyone who is in heaven, the angels, the saints. And that's very comforting to every one of us, that I'm not popular, I'm not famous, but actually I'm known to God. God knows me very well. And God knows everything about me. So Christ knows everything about them. And then he built with them a personal relationship. Even though everyone knew about the relationship between Christ and them. And the Bible recorded about that love and that relationship between them and Christ many times even in the same chapter. But also because... Christ loves them so much. He knows them very well. And he knows what they are in need. To the point that when Martha and Mariam wanted to send a message to our Lord Jesus Christ about Lazarus the sick, they didn't mention his name. The message was, the one who you love is sick. So their personal relationship is about love. About love between Christ and them. And the same thing. The message between us and God is love. Because that's his nature. And of course, when Christ all, is all-knowing, God is all-knowing, he knows everything. He didn't need a message from them. He knows everything. But also he knows all what we are going through. So Martha and Mariam at that time, like they were sending an, a supplication to the Lord by saying, my brother is sick, basically. They needed help. But Christ didn't go straight away. He waited until, like, Lazarus died. And of course, now the problem is getting worse and worse for them. And the first thing, both of them, Martha and Mariam, when they met Christ, what did they say to him? If you had been here, 
my brother wouldn't have died. Like blaming him kindly, reproaching him kindly, but your presence will make a difference. But they didn't know that Christ can do more than that. Even in the statement of faith that Martha said it, that she said it like, I, I know that you are the son of God and you have came to save the world. This is the statement of faith. So faith here works like not only on a, a, a level or a stage, but it goes all the way. But Christ knows us very well and knows our, our pains and suffering. In Isaiah, there was a prophecy about him that he has borne our griefs and carried our souls. So he knows everything about your griefs. He knows everything about your sorrows. He knows about what we are in need. And he plans everything according to his will because he knows us. And sometimes we go through phases of sadness, phases of even depression, sometimes isolation, sometimes loneliness. Sometimes I would like to desire something, but I couldn't get it. But he knows everything about us. And because he knows, he interacts with us. He knows that what we are in need, that he feels for it. And because he has borne our griefs, he is carrying us with all our griefs. When we lose the loved ones, he is grieving with us as well. And when we go through like um, a difficult phase in our life, phase of oppression, persecution, anything like that. He is with us. He's a companion. He's a friend. And even when he said to the disciples, our friend Lazarus, it's very personal. Very personal. So he knows everything about us. He knows what we're going through. He knows what we are in need. And sometimes we, we think that he does not action. Martha and Mary send the message and there's no action. <clears throat> to the point that in the, the scenario was getting worse until Lazarus died and then he was buried as well. And no action. But when they knew that Christ came, Martha came out, like, you know, to meet him be before he entered into, um, you know, the house and have, like, a dialogue. And the same, like, words, like, mm, said that to him, like, Mariam. But when Mariam knew with him from Martha, when she called him, he asked about her. So every time when we feel that God has forgotten us. No. He knows what you're going through and he calls you by name. He knows that what you are in need of something. And when Ma Mariam came out, she did something very, not strange, but something very beautiful. When she went, she kneeled down at his feet. This is a different action from Martha. Why at his feet? Because at the feet of Christ we receive. And she was like weeping. She had tears. And not only her, even the Jews were with her. And at the feet of Christ, she used to learn the word of God and to enjoy his words. So she's accustomed to be at the feet of Christ. And guess what? After she had done that, the Bible recorded something very nice. 
It's very beautiful. That Christ was groaned in the spirit and was troubled. He himself interacted with her request, with her manner of asking the Lord about her brother. Even she didn't ask for him to raise him. She said the same statement like Martha. If he had been in here, if you could been, if you could have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. So the same statement, same prayer. So sometimes when we need to receive, we have to be at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have to say it in a manner that full of trust and faith, and God will give to us what we need. And you can see here the human side of our Lord Jesus Christ. He interacted with her. He was in, the spirit was groaned, and he was troubled. And then after two verses, when he asked about the place, and of course he, 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 he knew about it, the Bible recorded that Jesus wept. So his interactions with us in a human level is evident. When we have tears in our eyes, he will have tears in his eyes. When I'm going through that pain, he will go through the same pain. When I'm in need of something, he will be in the same feeling for me that I know that you are in need, but maybe not now, maybe later. Maybe this is not good for you. A lot of people, they are in need of love. They couldn't have love. A lot of people, they are in need of success. They couldn't have success. A lot of people, they are in need of relationships, and they couldn't have relationships. But trusting the Lord that he knows all our needs, this is very comforting to me. Because, Lord, you know what I need. But I leave this in your hands. But the way how I'm going to ask and remind him will be at the feet of Christ. And the more that you are be at the feet of Christ, weeping and crying, the more that Christ can feel your pain and your emotions and your feelings. In Europe, they, they have a statue for our Lord Jesus Christ. And they have like a, a, a way that you, could, you, could, you cannot see the face of the Lord Jesus Christ except when you kneel down at his feet and look up. Which means that at the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ, I will receive. I will receive comfort. I will receive joy. I will receive direction, his word. But also, I will see the face of our Lord. And this is, again, to comfort me in a personal level. That when once I see the face of our Lord Jesus Christ, this is the greatest comfort ever. When I know that he is looking down at me and saying, you're not alone. I am with you. So the human interactions of humanity, of our Lord, was so important to, to us to feel everything we do. And everything we go through. But... After all of this, the action came later. When? After death. After four days in a tomb. And you know this is not acceptable to anyone to open a tomb um, in, like with the bad smell and all that stuff. But um, his divinity, he worked here to show us like his power and his authority over death. So Lord... I know you are going to action it at the time that you like. And he said it to the disciple, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. I know, Lord, that you take me in your hands to glorify God at the end. Even if it's not on this time, it's not in this time. Even if it's not on, on earth, it's not on earth but even after death. I remember how St. John Chrysostom was oppressed in his life to the point that he was exiled. And 
basically excommunicated from the church. And then after his departure, years, God has revealed the truth through St. Cyril, our Pope, the first, and all the world now enjoying his writings and his spiritual life. When that happened, after his death. So God can reveal the truth. God can give you life even after death. And that's why we have here a great faith and a great trust that will never be taken away from us. That God works in every aspect of my life, even after things are dead. And that's how now we need to show the Lord all our feelings or our emotions. How we need lots of support and lots of things. I'll kneel down at his feet and I'll ask. This is the spiritual part that we need to do. And you need to know that every time when we have something we're going through, we have the tears in our eyes. But you need to know that Christ has tears in his eyes as well. In the book of Revelation, chapter 7, gives us like a beautiful picture about the Lord and his throne and what's happening around. And the, the, the lamb is sitting on the throne. He serves us. And he said something very beautiful. He said that he will wipe away every tear from our eyes. So God's touch to us to wipe away all the pains and sufferings I suffered in the world. Everything I went through, I wasn't happy with. Everything I was lacking, and I didn't get. Everything like you know, I had tears days for me, I didn't have. That's why people, they, need, they know the wisdom of this life, that everything is vanity. And I need to look into what is important in my life and to have life with Christ. And the more that I go through all of this, the more I will get closer to the Lord and the more um, I feel his presence in my life. So now my knowledge is completely different because I need to build a personal relationship between me and God. When I personal live him, he feels all what you have, and he feels all your emotions and your feelings. And actually, he respects them, but also he shares with me all these feelings and emotions. So now we have a great trust and great faith in our Lord that God will provide. God will give, but according to his gifts and according to his um, uh, providence, not according to what I ask for, because Mary and Martha asked for healing of sickness. He came and raised Lazarus from the dead. So we need to look at him differently, and we need to build the personal relationship between him and me. And also, as you are aware, that even he himself feels all of this, all the angels are servants for that. When we need any kind of support, he sends his angels to support. He asks, like, you know, like the saints to go and help people. So he uses all, you know, the heavenly hosts around us to be with us. So for sure we are not alone. But the problem is within us that we don't feel his presence. We don't feel like the presence of the holy hosts and the heavenly hosts. We don't feel the presence of the saints that we need to, to feel all of this. So let us work in our relationship between us and God on a personal level, knowing that these facts but you need to experience on a personal level. May our Lord Jesus Christ, who has overcome like death and he has authority over life and death, will grant us to feel his personal presence in our life and to build this personal relationship between us and him. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.